Hey guys, it's Joby, and today my friend Ryan requested that I do a video about buses and how to use them when you're recording and or mixing. So that's what we're going to try to do. Sometimes it's a little easier for me to just do things than it is to explain things, so I hope that everything I say makes sense. If not, let me know, give me a question in the comments below, and I'll happily try to answer it for you. Basically, buses or auxes or mults, as they're sometimes referred to, that just means means combining two sources or more into one source. So I'll show you a couple things that you can do with that. Just to let you know, yeah, it, I mean, if you guys have some requests and there's something you want to learn, please, you know, don't be afraid to ask because I, I will respond. This is one of my band songs. This is called Oh My God. And uh, as you can see, there's quite a lot of tracks. So this is a pretty good one to uh, to discuss buses on. I use buses differently virtually every time I record and virtually on every song I record. I use them in a different way, whatever works for that song really, but I'm just going to show you a few ways. So the first thing we're going to look at here is a reverb. Now what I have is my snare drum, which is right here, being sent through a bus which has a reverb on it. So this is just a mono bus with a mono reverb because I didn't want the snare to be too gigantically huge on this song. And it's a real dirty reverb that's on this too. So let's see here. So. Okay, so that's what we're working with. Basically, what's going on here is your send determines how much of that instrument is going to the bus, your return. The bus is bringing back what you send to it affected. So if I mute this bus, then we should no longer hear the reverb on that snare. So that's our totally dry snare. back on. And we have just kind of a kind of a dirty, crusty reverb. Okay, so another example of that would be this vocal right here. What I'm doing is I have the vocal sent 100% of the way to the bus. And the bus is being automated because I wanted it super affected. That's one way to make it really heavily affected is by putting your send all the way to zero and then adjusting the return. And if you watch, you can see that the return on this vocal should be automated to go with the vocal. Oh That's because I didn't want it to go on the tails of the song. I just wanted it to get really crazy in the verse. So, I mean, that sounds super affected when it's not mixed in with the music at all. But once it's mixed in, it makes a little more sense. <laughs> things you can do with a bus is is group together a bunch of different things so like at the end of the song there's a huge patch here all of these tracks over here are a whoa oh oh kind of part i mean what do we got here there's four of me singing it there's four of jeff singing it and then there's four of my friend carmen singing it you know instead of trying to adjust the volumes individually on all these they're just all at zero and they're being sent to a bus every single one of these is getting sent to a bus so if i turn the solo off on the bus and hit the space bar you'll see that it's playing but we're not hearing anything because they're all being controlled by the one bus. Which that also means that I can affect all of these vocals at the same exact time. So all of these vocals are being compressed individually first and then I have them being compressed on the bus as well. And then there's also an EQ on the bus. So 
now we have, we have 16 tracks panned all over the place, but I can control them all with this one bus. And then that bus is also being sent to a delay, which is on another bus. And what that does for us, of course, is allows us to adjust these things parallel to one another. I can have it completely dry and turn off the delay. Or I could have it ridiculously wet. So yeah. That's another thing you can do with a bus is control um, multiple tracks all at the same time. And again, that's the same thing I'm doing with my guitars. So I have one, two, three, four, five different guitar tracks going on here. And they're all treated predominantly the same way. So instead of just filling all of these inserts up with, with effects and hogging all your computing power, what you can do is send them all to a bus and treat them all with basically the same setting. That's not always going to work for you. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. But, I mean, that's what's going on here. Every single one of these guitars is being treated through this bus. Let me go back here. and So you can see now that this guitar is playing, but if I mute the bus, there's no more guitar. So the bus is being, the guitar is being treated on this bus. Same thing with this guitar, it's all being treated through the bus. So, yeah, I mean, that's another way. I, I'm doing basically the same thing here with the bass guitar. Excuse me, as you can see, there are three bass guitar tracks on this song. Sorry, you guys, I haven't looked at this in about a year since I've done it. But there's our main verse bass, and then we have, like, a chorus bass and an outro bass. And as you can see, I compressed them and, and treated the sound differently on each individual track but they're still being controlled by an overall fader. And I changed the volumes on the individual tracks. So this first bass is a little quieter than the chorus or the end bass. And then the overall group is being controlled by the bus. I hope that makes sense. It's, you know, it's hard to explain. It's just something you do. Okay, so another one, for example, is the, my overheads from my drums. As you can see, there's nothing on the inserts everything's being done on a stereo bus. So I'm feeding these two channels to this bus and controlling and affecting everything only on that bus and not on the channels. And these channels just stay at zero all the time and the overall level is controlled with this fader. Same thing with my overhead mics, or excuse me, my room mics rather. The room mics are going to this fader and they're barely turned up in the mix. I have to crank it. Kind of doing the, uh, the old 1176, you know, overcooked trick on those guys, just smashing the living crap out of them. So they're just sitting in the back of the drums. Okay, now sometimes I will do an overall drum group. Again, I, I don't always do it. I guess it just depends on the song, like I said. But sometimes, uh, you know, you might want to treat more than one thing at the same time on the drum group. So let, let's go ahead and do that. Let's make a new track. We'll do a new stereo aux. 
an aux and a bus, basically the same thing, an auxiliary input. So what we're going to do here is select a bus, we'll do 29 and 30 because that's available, and what we're going to do is we will send all of this stuff to this bus, to 29 and 30. Okay, so there you go, there's a good example. So if we mute this reverb out, Shut the fuck up! It's me! Okay, so if we play this drum track without the reverb... And then if we unmute the reverb, now you can hear that everything's going through the same verb. Now what that would be good for is let's say like Let's say we want one little section of the song to be, to make the drums super duper nasty. So let's like, for instance, let's, uh, let's grab guitar rig and we will use a rat and turn this down because it's going to be super gross sounding. But let's say we just want a, one little piece of the song to have some really gross drums. We can send them all to one bus, and then for that piece of the song... saying and then when we don't want that anymore we just mute that track super duper gross <laughs> but yeah I mean that's basically just one of the millions of cool ways you can actually use your buses Okay guys, now we're looking at my friend Bob's song, Die Alone, and I definitely used buses far more extensively on this. So I have all three of these guitars going through one guitar bus, and then that guitar, or that guitar bus is being sent to a guitar effects bus. Okay? The bass is being sent to a bass bus, the violins are being sent to a violin bus, the violins bus is then being sent to a violin effects bus where all the effects are. The vocals are being sent to a vocal bus and the harmonies are being sent to another separate bus and then those are both being sent to a vocal effects bus and then everything in the entire mix is being sent to a mix bus. Now the reason that I use a separate mix bus instead of just putting this stuff on a master fader is Pro Tools <clears throat> calculates the output volume funny on the master fader. If you if you need more information on that, read up on it. But you really don't want to put anything on your master fader in Pro Tools. You want to create a mix bus. So basically the mix bus, if I make all of this stuff inactive on the mix bus, this is what we're gonna get. We'll go to a chorus here. I so on the mix bus is my mastering chain. So now if I turn all that on and we play the same song in the same spot, it should sound quite different. Basically, it's going through a tape emulator 
and then it's going through a compressor on virtual mix rack and then it's going through a limiter to make it louder at the end. So that's basically what a mix bus is, is your, your mastering channel, if you will. Even, even if you're not going to master the record yourself, if you're going to send it out to mastering, a lot of times people will mix into a mix bus so you know what it's going to sound like after it's been treated. So if I was going to send this out for mastering, I would actually bypass everything on this channel and I would send that off to my mastering engineer. Okay, you guys, here's another example of how we can use buses. Okay, so if we take a look at this, all these tracks right here are a five-piece drum kit that I recorded. What do I actually have going on down here? That's an awful lot of tracks for a five-piece drum kit kick or drum kit, correct? So what I have is I have the original kick drum track and then I have a parallel kick drum track and then I have the snare top, I have a parallel snare top I have a snare sample I have a snare bottom then I have my three toms I have a hi-hat track, I have an overhead left and right being sent to a bus so they're all being treated at the same time then I have a left and right room track, which is also being sent to a bus, this room mics. They're being sent down here. And then I have a drum verb, and that is getting the toms. It's getting the snare sample, the snare top, and it's getting one of the kick drums. So let's say we wanted to control all of these snares at the same time. Basically, we could make them a group or we could just send them all to a bus so we could go track new mono aux input create and then we could choose a bus let's do bus 7 and then the outputs of all these snares I'm gonna send to bus 7 bus 7, bus 7 bus 7 uh, seven. Okay, so now all of my snares are being controlled by this one bus. And why would you want to do that? Well, because I have four snare tracks. So let's say we wanted the snare louder in the mix. I could do that with a group, or I could do it with a bus. Now you don't want to do that, you don't want to crank it way up there, that's gain staging and that's a whole nother video. But you get the idea. Um, we could go backwards to that and say the snare is too loud, and we can turn the snare down. That's just another thing you can do with a bus. So, and then, again, now I have all of the drums going to one bus down here. So let's say, in the final mix, the drums weren't quite thumping the way I wanted them to. I could put, uh, let's say, let's put a limiter on there, okay? And we just need to get more volume out of the drums, so. Now I can limit all the drums. So now nothing in the mix is getting louder except for my drums because I can control it with the drum bus. Okay, so one other thing that you can do that I personally don't do, but you could watch some of Dave Pensado's videos if you wanted to learn about doing this 
And what Dave does is he actually mixes, or I should say he sends all of the music to one stereo bus. And then he sends all the vocals to one stereo bus. And then he sends all the effects to one stereo bus. So we can adjust the overall output of those three separate individual things with a bus and, and kind of fine tune and polish his final mix, if you will. Um, I personally don't like to do that. It's just not my thing. I, I'd rather do it on individual segments like this and have my drums separated from my guitars, separated from my bass, separated from my keyboards and my synths, separated from my vocals, separated from my percussion, etc., etc. Um, and as you can see, a lot of times I uh, have some pretty high track counts that I'm working with. Um, but yeah, guys, that's really all I can think of for the moment. So if you have any questions about this or if I didn't explain it well enough and there's something specific you want to know more about, um, I'm happy to answer your questions. Just let me know and I will be happy to help. So that's it for now, guys. Peace. Take it easy.